Good morning and happy Saturday. And we are here to work on week 48, which is gratitude for the elements of air. So yes, let's jump right into the prompt so we can get into our session. You can see kind of where I'm going here with the bits that I have here on my desk. So I have an absolute love for feathers. I find and collect them everywhere I go. Long walks are bound to find me emptying my pockets onto my studio table with these precious finds. It's impossible for me to walk by one and not scoop it up. Even when I tell myself, certainly I have enough. I use these treasures in my collages, gift wrapping, table and tablescapes throughout my home. Furthermore, I believe that it's natural and instinctive connection to the wind or a breeze that fuels my imagination and wanderlust for far away places. Travel has always supplied me with the images and elements of my visual vocabulary and the mythos of my art. Wind, feathers, um, what else comes to mind when you think about the element of air? Let's take a close, closer look at its essence. Right away, new ideas and making connections between ideas may come to mind. Yes, air is very much a creative element that plays an important role in our intelligence. Air is the beginning of our new ideas, the place where they are born before they continue on their journey to a more tangible state. Take a moment and sink into the idea of air's shape or lack thereof. This is one of air's unique traits. You cannot tangibly touch it, unlike metal, earth, and water. According to the Chinese zodiac, the masculine and active element of air is warm and moist. Its direction is east, its color is yellow. So we can get some we can take um some color and sort of weather <clears throat> um, prompts from the idea of air. Jupiter is the planet that represents air in its zodiac, and the signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So maybe, you know, you are fall into one of those three categories, and you can draw from your own personality, your experiences, the things that you know about your nature as an air sign. Air seasons is spring, and it's time of the day are morning and sunrise. This is our latest, our last element of nature to look at with gratitude and appreciation during our journaling time. A cool breeze that flows through the air through the, um, through a window as we work in our studios. This element allows our jelly plate and paints to become that perfect to come to that perfect place um, when pulling a permit. Um, a per I'm sorry when pulling a print. I'm so like pulling a permit. Now that's Freudian because I'm working on this house you know my ranch studio and all week long if I'm not doing art and things in the studio I'm on the phone <laughs> with the county and with contractors and I'm like just pulling all kind of permits so it's funny when I read there um, pulling a the natural thing was permit not print <laughs> that's funny but yes you know like of course for me here in the desert the 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 dryness of the air whether or not it, our air doesn't have a lot of humidity in it and it really does affect my jelly plate i've had to learn how to work differently when i first started working on a jelly plate i lived in chicago very on the lake michigan lots of water there lots of moisture in the air and um <clears throat> when i first moved um, back to the desert it was an adjustment to try to get my plate to do what I needed it to do. So, you know, like it's like these little subtleties with our art supplies, the dry time, you know, the open time, all of that is relative to the conditions of our environment and the air. So these, all these things play factors um, in our work. And a lot of times it's not thought of. I know I get a lot of questions about people trying to get certain results out of their jelly plate and and oftentimes it comes down to air. Honestly, it comes down to humidity, the dryness, what's going on with the plate, but it's not a natural first place to think, but it plays a dynamic role. So there are hundreds of small examples of this element at work. Let's pay attention and notice how we depend on air as an element. Of course, there is the very obvious, which is each breath we take is a meditation in gratitude. So enjoy. I'm excited for this project because I thought we would just have fun today doing some include and some instinctive or intuitive collaging. We haven't done that in a while where I just have a table full of stuff 
and I just begin the process of picking up whatever I pick up and just gluing it down and not like you know sweating all the little details but just allowing myself to intuitively and instinctively work with the things I have around me and I am going to work um, feathers into the collage I love working with feathers so I thought it'd be fun to take some of the feathers I had in here over here in the drawer and pull them out and just do a collage around them and these are so easy to get of course so who can't just pick up some feathers easy enough and then this actually is a strip of feather that's uh, feathers that are on a tape and I actually um, spray paint at them because I'm working on this assemblage and I just thought it just so pretty but I think I might even just take a piece off of it and use it as an element so I pull this out and just if I want to use that as an element so that's what we're going to do but before we go to the table um, I just thought what I did <clears throat> On, on this past week, I had so many projects, so many things I was catching up on that I'm not a, I wasn't able to finish my cards out. And I'll do that over the holidays when I just have some downtime. I'll finish this card deck. But because I like to always remember the projects I'm doing throughout the year in my journal, I did take one of them and I'm dedicating it to the book. So this one will not be in the deck I'm going to keep it in the book just as a reminder of the project and I suggest that you do the same thing because it's it's always nice sometimes a year or so later you can come back and think oh that's right I did those cards or I'd like to make another deck when you flip through your book so I just kind of did this pocket using some of the papers from <clears throat> the printable pack that I had been using here with the Venice just to kind of keep the inspiration and finish out this spread so they work together and then I decided to take the one that was a nautical because, you know, all the water. Venice is so much about water. So I thought this card worked well with this. Um, and so what I did on the back is I took a piece of um, pattern because <clears throat> I decided to, to put an extra decorative fat, uh, something on the back. And I had these old patterns that I got from the thrift store. Door. I'm trying to see if I have my hand on it. Here's one. <laughs> this one, I think when I looked at it, it was like from 1967 or something like that. It looks like it. <laughs> but, um, so I just took some out. They were already pieces that had been cut out. Whoever is pattern it was, she had already started using it. So I just tore a piece off. And I just kind of this little, uh, you know, added interest. You don't have to collage the back. You can put some extra stuff on there. I like using patterns because they go pretty much translucent, but they have their own little element. And so this one is every yantra has a mantra. And so it's like every picture has a prayer or um, a word thought that goes with it. And I just, I always like to remind myself of that because I feel like as creators, even if you make a, a do art that's abstract and people are like, you know, like, <clears throat> you know the energy behind it. You know the feeling behind it. And generally, if a person will just meditate and come into the space of their work, they'll walk away with something as well. Um, and so that's the idea. Every yantra has a mantra. I love that. So that goes there. And um, so that would finish this off. So there we are. Um, I'll get all of my stuff together and we'll be back and down to the table in just a minute okay here we are with a clean slate and I have a, just a whole pile of um, pieces here that I have been working with so I just thought I'm just gonna start off by collaging just need to get a sheet of paper here that I can use for gluing. Still haven't gotten another glue book. That would be nice. Let's take this. And um, so we'll just have fun working on a couple of collages. I'm just going to see if I limit myself <coughs> to what I have in front of me how well I'll do. Just a pile from the week week of doing projects and working on 
collages and things like that. And a lot of times it'll collect at the top of my desk, like all these little pieces. And because I know I'll come back and work them into something before I clean up. So I just thought, well, you know, let's use these. And the whole idea of intuitive collaging is that you just don't overthink it. <clears throat> you know, you can spend a little time on it. Yeah, but it's not designed to just be overthought. Let's put this down. So you just kind of keep on grabbing pieces and just put them down. And the more you allow yourself just to do that and you find that freedom of not you know interviewing every piece it's amazing that you it allows you to sort of get out the way of the left brain and then just start creating and pretty quickly things seem to open up okay So you just find pieces and it's almost like a puzzle. You pick up a piece, you like the colors, and it's if you if you um like I said, if you just relax into this idea of intuitive collaging, it takes a minute in the beginning because you do want to kind of vet every piece and you second guessing yourself. But if you just you know go with the freedom that your journal allows you, because it's you know, this is no right or wrongs, it's not like you doing any masterpieces or anything like that, so you don't have to have that pressure. What you'll find is your eye is going to sort of naturally gravitate to the things that work together. It is like the oddest thing. I really like how jaggedy this is. So I'm going to take that piece. I'm going to put this piece down. And I'm really kind of working sort of limited here because I don't even, I haven't even allowed myself really to um, expand my palette other than what I have in front of me. And it's funny because what had me thinking of it is, is I don't really see any gold. <laughs> and I naturally would be, oh, I think I'm going to grab a little gold. But at the same time, I do have a bit of this here. Let me see what else do we have down in here. Hmm. Well, looky here. There is a bit of gold. This nice little swipe. So let's just grab this and uh, perfect. Get rid of this. that away okay, let's get this off the top this is going to go pretty translucent but it's no need to have the extra there so this can go here and then this will go over top of it kind of see where we're going to place this kind of that's good there I kind of want to still put something else <clears throat> in here well that's good and then I can put this over top of it there just a little odd piece who knows what it is but it has colors so that's all we care about put this right here okay that allows me to drop this down a bit so I don't want to cover all that up 
and then this can go here okay so let's go ahead and glue this okay sort of figure this out there I think that should do it and then this will go right there okay that's perfect I think that's good so I could use a little extra layer of something <clears throat> my goal is to cover up some of the little white pieces from the page and then the nice thing about it is we just keep on layering too so it's like adding these layers that's why you keep all these little scraps because they really do come in handy so it just adds a little bit more there oh that's good that's perfect so this will go down here So these are just, these are literally my waste papers from my desk when I'm working like this drawing paper. <clears throat> and then what I do is when it's gotten sufficiently grunged, you know, and I'm not, I don't have it on my desk any longer, I'll stain it um, and then put different dyes or paints or whatever on it and let it mature in the sun you know like in staining you know the the, the echo eco staining and uh, just get this really nice pattern going on <clears throat> so let me see let's kind of stop and see what kind of feather do I want to do mm. That's nice. That goes really nice right there. Well, see, I'm glad that I checked because I just put this down and it's not quite dry. So I can lift it up and the perfect place to stick kind of the feather underneath there. But I am going to just put a little bit of glue this is PVA, so this is the white glue. So I'll just put it on the spine of the feather. Okay, so just kind of put it a little bit on the spine of the feather. So it'll just lay flat, stay in place. Right there is good. Oh. Perfect. I'll put that back down. And it's kind of just, I'll just hold it down a little bit there. Because the PVA takes a little bit for it to take hold. But that looks good. I like it. Okay. And so down here, we need to put something. Maybe oh, have this bit of fabric. This could be nice. I like this. It's a bit of staining. That looks nice. I may do that. Or let's see. I had my eyes on this blue too. I think I like this. It's a little bit more subtle. So let's just rip this because it doesn't need to be that thick.
Okay, let's put these down. I like that. So see, this collage just came together so easily. And <clears throat> of course you can add more. But uh, it has a nice finish to it. Put this here. They just come, you know, kind of came together pretty easily. I do have some. Where's the? I think there it is. Uh, I have this tape that a lot of times when I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can grab it here. Yeah, when I'm doing um, specimens and things like this, I like to use this tape. It's like this Japanese paper. It's a hinge tape. And literally, I'll take a piece of it and like to really kind of give this feather that sort of specimen look, you know, like you see. And it keeps it flat. And it just gives it a nice look. Is I'll cut a piece that's wide enough to kind of go from side to side like this. And then what I'll do is I'll rip and make it thin. You know, you don't want a big old thick piece. But to make it look like those little thin tapes that, you know, you see in herbal, um, in herbarariums and that kind of thing. So let's see where I want to put it. Kind of like it right there in the middle. It'll hold everything down. So... Just get some glue on here. It has a, it has a, it's, these are gummed back. They're actually used for hanging, I mean, for mounting um, your artwork so that it's archival. And then when it's time to take, like if you wanted to hinge a, um, <clears throat> a, uh, a photograph or a collage or something behind a mat board and let's say at some point in the future you want to be able to take them apart it doesn't ruin your art that's what these are used for but I also use it for this kind of thing here I love it because it gives that nice translucent kind of thing that makes it look like a specimen but it doesn't get in the way I love that okay we like this okay so there are some other things that I could do for instance I can go down here in my trusty um, since I have this Asian text there I have a lot of a lot of vintage text I could put that there. That'd be cool. But I like using in my collages and stuff. Like this one could be good. I could take this piece right here. I'm going to cut it because I'm going to run it off the, the edge here. So this is a my Asian printables that... that uh, from last year, from 2020, many of you've gotten their chock full of a lot of original papers of mine in that printable pack that you guys are willing are free to use in your artwork and what have you. Because these papers are hard to, to get your hands on, a lot of these, the vintage ones. In Europe, it's easier. I mean, especially if you live in Australia or New Zealand, you guys are so close to, to Asia and you get so many um, resources for them. And uh, some of the Europe, you know, some of the European countries are closer to like Western Europe. I mean, Eastern, I'm sorry, Eastern Europe. See, that just looks perfect there. I love it. So I'm going to put that right there. Um, but otherwise, unless you're traveling there or something, these aren't the easiest to get your hands on. 
So I have another one. I'm trying to get, honestly, I'm trying to get it ready for December. It's just, I've had so many projects that have kept me going. But I've gone through my collection, so hopefully I can get it together. To, I've had requests for another Asian paper pack with some new ones in there. And literally, I, I have so many papers. I've been gifted them by many of my um, patrons and followers. You guys have just always been so generous. Um, my own collection of collecting them because I've been collecting them for a while. So I have um, enough that I probably could do a year's worth every month if I could ever have my act together. See how nice that looks? Oh, I love it. All those papers just so, oh, so well. I'm singing here. Let's do another one. Let's do another one together. Why not? We're hanging out. So maybe on this side, let's, let's see what I put my hands on. And these aren't designed, intuitive collaging is designed to be quick and intuitive. You know, once you kind of get your base down and you can fool around and maybe find some of the perfect pieces, you know, to on, on your top collages. Actually, they're just designed to be, why is this not, come on, let's act right. They're designed to just go fast and you really get some of your best stuff this way. So I do have a bit of this crinkled paper. I think I actually just made this. I have one of those machines that crinkle that does this. Um, I like that. So let's go with that. I'm going to do some of this. Oh, I like this already. Put this here. Okay, so we're going to put those down. Let's get these down. That's one of my rules of intuitive collaging is not to fool around with trying to plan it. Just when you put the first piece you pick up, put it down. I want it this way, so I need to glue this side. Let's go ahead and put it down and go to the next. That's the rule. Because you start laying them out like what I was getting ready to do there. <laughs> oh, you can get in your own creative way. Trust me. Because then you'll start figuring out, well, maybe this one. No, maybe that one. Nope. The rules of intuitive collage is pretty much the first thing you put your hand on. You know, within reason. Because you might flip under one or two things and you see something like that's it, you know. But pretty much the rule of thumb is the first thing or so you put your hands on. Lay it down and find a space for it. And then you just keep on doing that. And what happens is miracles. Okay, so that goes there. And then this is going to go down here. Right there. I like that. We'll just see how these work. That's the other thing that I find so enjoyable is seeing how they work together. So like when these pages come together, just see how my intuitive eye that knows what, the, what, what it's trying to accomplish because I'm not in its way. Because I'm just like picking stuff up and putting it down. I'm not making a lot of decisions. It always amazes me how congruent the designs will be to one another. A lot of times I think to myself, I couldn't have done that if I had actually really spent time studying it and trying to make it happen. Okay, so we like this. Um, I had my eye on this piece right here, honestly. I thought this was pretty cool. So we're going to take that. And this is good too. Something about this brown paper here. Let's find it. Oh, that's good there. Let's put that there. Because the first thing we have to do is kind of cover up all the, the white spaces. 
on our page. Okay, let's put that there. And oh, I know what I was thinking earlier. I have these tea bags for my chaga tea. That could be pretty. So I have to take the tea out of that. down here okay and this right here would be good see how these just all the color ways work nicely without actually doing a lot of thinking about it okay ahead and put this down now and let's see I think I'm gonna take that tea bag and kind of make it like a I don't know I was thinking about making a sort of a pocket for my feather or at least a backdrop for it. Hmm. Didn't get a lot of, let me do this again. I didn't get too much glue on the end there. That's not gonna stick down. This paper's a little thicker, so I think I need to make sure I get a little bit more glue coverage. All right. here. Perfect. Okay. See, this is just piecing together quite nicely. I like that there. Let's see. Definitely at the bottom. So, Kind of mirrors this. It's a smaller piece. Right there. Okay. Now, let me first of all start because my camera spaces are getting ready to run out, and don't want it to do it right when I'm in the middle of. doing something that gets missed. I don't know if I'm going to use this. I'll put that there. Let me restart. Okay, we're back. I kind of like this here. I'm sort of liking this stacking that I'm doing here. But because I'm getting ready to work on um, let's just see. just want kind of like an easy breezy piece like this piece is good let's use this just a little something there okay um, let me go ahead and work on the, the feather pocket part of it now so I've got everything else down I want to see how we're gonna finish this up These papers are nice and translucent. All right, 
So these are, I make my tea bags. I like to drink chaga tea. I don't know if you guys are familiar with ta chaga, but it's a grain. And um, it's kind of like, like a little barky. I'll show you. I love it. It's kind of like a mixture of tea and coffee. Actually, I haven't tried grinding this up yet to make, I bet you this would make a really good, haven't done it yet, but just when I was pouring it out to show you all because I, um, you know, do sort of the ground pigments. Let me just put this somewhere where I don't spill it. I bet you this would grind up real it's darker before you actually use it to get you know the the tea out and when I poured it out it was this this light color is really pretty I'm thinking I can grind this up and make a a pigment out of it let me put this right here we'll get back to you okay just looking at something differently for the first time which would mean the dark would be really nice too. So I'm going to open this this tea bag. Just love the color of it. Let's just see. Still spilling out chaga. But it's like a comes off the bark of um Aspen trees or cedars. Very medicinal. Okay, so let me get this stuff off of here. Okay, I'm thinking that I'm going to go for this feather here just to change it up. I think this color is so good with with this so I'll put this down some kind of way or maybe even as a background so let me just go ahead and cut this off here okay this stuff right here I've gotten um, already sewn on here like I think I've, I've gotten this at Michael's before like in the floral session section but it's like feathers that are sewn onto a tape so you can search for them even online if you're interested in something similar and then I stain them and paint them and all that kind of stuff you know but like I feel like if we put something like this down kind of over this section here just adds a nice bit of texture. Just got to figure out how much I want to put down. Let's take this amount and see. We just kind of want to kind of add here and put this. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. It almost looks like a flame. <gasps> how pretty. Yeah, it has that look of a flame. Let's see, let me just kind of get the proportion. I think I'm gonna slide it over a little bit. Slightly kind of off center, because this is so strong here. That I feel like if I just do that, so let's go ahead and put this down. I wanna try to keep it somewhat crinkly, I don't know. So let me just kind of get the edges. I like it looking wrinkled and crinkled. So let's see if we can. Just kind of squish it together. Okay. See, and it goes down fairly translucent, which is nice. You know, because it's a tea bag. So that part's good. I think like right about here. I like that. And let's see. 
I think I would just like another little something that's some contrast. Let's try this piece here. Yeah. I felt it was a little too blendy. But let's... Oh, I like that. That kind of bridges everything that way. So you see what happens is that once you start working it out, you begin, your eye begins to pick up on like, you know, what you need to do. So I like this. And I make it a little crunchy too. Yeah, I like that. And then that. So let's put this down. So... No, take that off. So let's, um, we'll use some PVA. I know this is going to be strong enough and just kind of get it all on here. I'm not going to put it on the top though because I don't want that, I don't want these feathers to get weird. I want them to stay nice and, you know, fluid. Let me get a tissue. Here we are. So I can kind of pat it and get the glue up while pressing it down. And kind of hold it up so you can see it better. Sort of see, looks like a flame. And, and I think I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up the same thing with the, the text and let me just cut this and I'm going to mimic it so I'm gonna find some Asian text that I think will be perfect and we're gonna put it right in this area so let's go digging while waiting for this to set up I feel like I want something a little bolder let's see what I have here Something like hmm. that could be nice. That's nice and subtle too. Let's just rip this off and see. End it here. And then I think I'm going to take that this top part off there. Let's get rid of this. Oh, I like that. See how that just finishes it off beautifully. And when I put this down, we're going to be able to see everything underneath it. Oh, I love it. Oh, my goodness. Nothing like a good collage. Let me just get this side so it's not all. Okay. Nothing like a good collage. Mm, mm, mm. Beautiful. Let's love these. I love working with feathers anyhow. They're just so inspirational to me, so. So we're going to put that right there. Yes, perfect. And this goes translucent, so we can still see those papers underneath. It just gives like a nice final layer to stuff. And it just works in so nicely with this paper up here. I just think, so this vintage paper. See, so there we have it. What a beautiful collage, if I must say so myself. I know you guys are thinking. <laughs> you all know I have fun in the studio. I just enjoy this. I just never, this never gets old for me, ever. So I hope that was inspirational. It gave you, you know, some ideas and some different ways to think about air and I know you all have feathers I'm sure many of you have done this 
And so you can just run to that stash and um, I have all kind of feathers. Like this is a nice one for a bigger collage, but this these pages weren't big enough for it. All kinds of collages. So any feathers. So anyway, or whatever else says air to you. There's a lot of different elements and things that you know you could use. But um, here we are. Two collages nicely finished. And yeah, they work nicely together too. It's like picks up subtle colors. Alrighty, well listen, you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Enjoy your weekend and this long um, Thanksgiving weekend for many. And let's see, I will see you all again next week for prompt number 49. We only have three more weeks. Wow. And then we're at the holidays, you know, some downtime. And then we start all over in January. I've got a lot of fun things planning. I'm flushing out a lot of next year's plans. So we'll see a lot, lot, lot more tutorials, a lot more howls and Maybe I'm break I'm trying to break down more of the fundamentals of jelly printing and like little small steps to answer a lot of questions I get about a lot of things. So I thought if I made them in, into smaller how tos in you know kind of chunk size, bite size um, videos that could go a long way to helping you all flesh out a lot of what you're doing in your studios. But anyway, if you love this, if you like this video, please, or if you loved it, <laughs> thumb, thumb it up. And it's the first time that you've come to my channel and so many new people are, are discovering the channel and hanging out with us. I really welcome you all and thank you all for all your comments and, and reaching out. Please make sure you hit that bell and hit all so that you can get all the notifications. The premieres, we've been having so much fun in the premieres. Thanks for hanging out. Um, with me you all and I look forward to Saturday mornings in that hour um, hangout time with you all so thanks again for the time we've spent together this morning chatting as this video has been going on and I will see you all next week so much love Mwah. take care bye bye